So we just got Raspberry Pi support added uh, to the Getting Started Kit course, as you all know. Um, so we'll be talking about how you can actually configure your uh, Raspberry Pi and get everything up and running on it. Um, we will then move into creating a program. So we'll just do a simple kind of first program creation just to show everybody what that looks like. Um, from there, we will move into kind of starting programs automatically. So one of the big use cases for the Raspberry Pi is, you know, you have this thing kind of sitting in the corner uh, doing something. So we'll, we'll show you how you can kind of easily get that going. So you can have your fidgets program easily running uh, the second it gets power, basically. So that's what we'll be doing there. Uh, and then we'll be talking briefly about some other projects that are possible, uh, what fidgets is going to be releasing fairly soon. Um, and we'll also have some time at the end for some questions. Uh, and then just to talk a little bit about my setup here. So I do have a Raspberry Pi kind of in this little mess right here. So you can't see it, but that's this guy right here. Um, it's connected to a monitor with a keyboard. And then what I'll be doing is I have it, uh, I have it screen shared here. Um, so everything will be kind of done on here. And then we can also kind of see the output. Uh, I'll be using the Getting Started Kit for my output today. So Getting Started Kit connected to a Raspberry Pi. Uh, with the computer and then we can see the computer here so that's the kind of setup for today so to get started the first thing i want to do i will uh just make this slightly larger so everybody can, everybody can see but the first thing that you're going to want to do in your classroom when you get your uh you know when you have when you have your Raspberry pi you have your fidgets is to configure your pi so uh luckily it's actually extremely simple to get this done so all you need is your raspberry pi and a few instructions from us so it's literally one command that you copy and paste in. So I'm gonna show us all how to do that right now. And I'll show you where to get this information as well. So just like we do for everything else, um, information is always going to be in the Getting Started Kit tutorial. So if you're getting started with the Raspberry Pi, you always go to the Getting Started Kit tutorial, um, something to always remember. So if we click on this uh, Set My Language and Environment button, like we always do, we now have this drop down, and we can see here that we have Windows, we have Mac, and then we have the Raspberry Pi. So now we have finally the Raspberry Pi. Everyone can kind of jump for joy, we're all happy. Uh, and as you can see here, we have Python and we have Thawney. So once you do select Raspberry Pi, Python, Thawney, and press done, you'll see the same kind of setup that you're probably used to, uh, but you'll see something slightly different, which is this install kind of button here. Um, so this, if we click into this, everyone's already probably built their kit. So if we click into install, that's where we will get the instructions for how to actually get this running on our Raspberry Pi. So you can see here that Raspberry Pi models two and above. All you have to do is copy these commands here. So you can copy them all at once just with this copy button. Um, and then what you would do is going back to my Pi, um, you would open up your terminal and I'll just make this slightly larger so that we can all kind of see. Oops, I actually don't know if it'll let me do this with my Oh, yeah, there, there it is. So we'll open up the terminal. Um, I actually, I'm just going to copy this again. I have these, this uh, right here, so I can copy that. But those were the commands from the, the last step there. And all you're doing is you're right clicking and you're saying paste. So that will kind of do everything for you. You don't have to worry about uh, uh, doing really anything. Um, and basically just the only thing to note is there were two commands. It was kind of two, one line, two lines basically. Um, and by pasting them both, uh, what we'll do, what it'll do is it'll run the first command, which it just did, and then it will auto populate. We can see right here, it'll auto populate that second command. So all you have to do is just press enter again, and it will run that second command. So there's, there's kind of two commands, but you just paste once. Um, so I already have it installed on this machine. Uh, so we can see that it kind of completed, but basically that's all you have to do to get it, uh, configured, uh, for your machine. So pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, the only thing to note is if you are on a different model, so just taking a little, a quick look at the models here, um, if we go to Raspberry Pi's website, uh, if we scroll down, we can see all their different models that they have available. So basically, uh, if you're on anything from Raspberry Pi 2 and above, uh, so Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi 2 and above, which is all the new stuff, that's all you have to do. Um, if you are using an older uh, Pi 1, or you're using a Pi Zero. So the Pi Zero looks something like this. So this is the little guy. Um, if you're using a Pi One or a Pi Zero, what you're going to do is you're just gonna click on this down here and you'll get your own instructions. So they're not as, it's not as simple uh, because those are using an older processor, 
but it is the same kind of result. You just have to run a few more commands to get everything up and running. Um, so in general, most people will just be kind of copying this in, pasting it, uh, and that's all you'll have to do. So uh, once you do have that installed, the next step is to create your first program. So we're going to do that here today. Um, if your students were doing the kind of getting started kit with the Raspberry Pi, what they would be doing is they would be uh, moving on to the configure step here. So just like we did, uh, you know, just like we've all done kind of before, you would be, uh, let's see here, we'd be hitting next to go to the configure step. And this will show them instructions on how to get up and running with their first program. So I'm just going to do that kind of live here, uh, but that's where they would go. So I would close this now because, you know, everything's already installed. So I can just close this terminal here. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is open here, programming and Thony. So I'm going to open up Thony uh, and then we'll be able to use it. So if, if, if you're familiar with Python from uh, Windows or Mac, you'll know that in order to get fidgets up and running, you do tools, manage packages, there you go. and then you do fidget 22. There you go. This one is fidget 22, there you go. like uh, that. Yeah, you to just quickly, I'm just going to quickly mute. OK, there we go. Um, so we'll do fidget 22 just like this. You'll find the package here, and then you'll install it. So just like you've done on Windows and Mac, and again, all of those instructions are uh, available in this configure step here. So you don't have to write anything down. It's all kind of there. And it's the exact same setup as if you've done this on a Windows or a Mac. Um, the other kind of step two here, if anyone is uh, kind of more comfortable with, with, with uh, the terminal and with uh, Linux, uh, the other thing that you could do instead of doing that step, uh, let me make this bigger. Uh, you could also just do pip three, install fidget 22 like that and that would uh that would basically do the same thing for your system so you can use pip like that or you can use it through thony it's the same end result there so uh, now that we have it installed what i'm going to do is just write our first program so i've pre-written something here uh, i just have this little simple file here so uh, i don't know if i can man, it's not happy with me resizing for some reason. So I'm just going to go like this to make this slightly bigger. So, uh, you know, the code's, of course, going to be the exact same. This is just a simple Python project. Uh, what I have here is I have a digital output. So I'm just using the uh, red LED from my getting started kit there. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of flash it. So this is just for me to test and make sure that my uh, Raspberry Pi is actually working. There we can see the red LED flashing. So now I know that, hey, my Raspberry Pi is happy with fidgets and everything is kind of working as it should. Um, so that is uh, really nice. And again, if you are uh, more familiar with, if you're more comfortable with the command line, um, what you could also do, or the terminal, I guess I should say, what you could also do is look for this program uh, on your desktop. So here I have the Pi, uh, the one I ran was Pi start. So just a simple program. So you could also just do Python 3 Pi start like that. And you run this and it should run. So that's another way you could do it from the uh, terminal if you're more comfortable with the terminal. So pretty easy there. Uh, and now we have kind of confirmed that, hey, yes, our, uh, our project is actually working and fidgets are working. So um, heading back here, the next thing that a lot of people are going to do uh, when they have their project. So usually you'll kind of do your, uh, you'll write your code on your uh, desktop environment. And then if you want to deploy this thing, uh, you know, again, like if you're doing a classroom monitoring project or for Michael, for example, he's doing a greenhouse project where he wants to, uh, you know, monitor his greenhouse and do all this stuff autonomously. Uh, what you're going to want to do is figure out how to start your programs automatically so that you can just be like, hey, I'm going to plug in a battery to this thing or I'm going to plug in, you know, the power supply and I'm just going to leave it. I don't have a, a monitor or a keyboard or anything. Um, so. Uh, how you would do this, there's kind of two ways. So we do have some documentation here. If we go to the projects tab uh, here, so learn projects, uh, you'll see the Raspberry Pi come up here under the sorted kind of list. So hopefully everybody can see that and I can just select the Raspberry Pi. I'm using shift to just kind of just select the Raspberry Pi. And we have a few projects to start and we'll have more projects coming. Uh, but you can see the first project here is starting automatically. Um, so this will show you guys 
everything you need to know about what we're going to do right now. So again, just so for your information, you don't have to write anything down. It's all here. Um, but I'm just going to do this live now uh, and, and talk about what we have to do. So um, exiting out of this. So my goal right now is I want to make this program start automatically. So if I plug in power to my Pi, I want this program to start. So what I'm going to do to accomplish that is I'm going to use something called cron, uh, which is a scheduling program that you may be familiar, you may not be familiar. Um, but basically, all you're going to have to do is say cron tab dash e. So I'm going to edit my cron file. I'm not sure if anyone here is familiar with this. But basically, it's pretty simple. Um, this is going to open up this scheduler file. So this is a file that basically you say you wanted to run something every hour or you want to run something when you reboot like we do, this is where you would put that information and the system will automatically kind of do that for you. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down to the beginning of this file here. So this is the beginning here and I'm just going to say at reboot. Uh, I want so when this thing reboots, I want to run my file. So I'm using Python to run it and the location is home slash pi slash pi underscore start, I believe. So basically we can just double check that. Uh, the file that I had was this pi underscore start and it's at the location home pi. So basically all I'm saying is, you know, when this reboots, I want you to run this file. And it's, it's the exact same thing that we just kind of did previously. Uh, you know, when I had this other terminal open and we, and we said something like this, we said Python three pi start dot pi. So I can run this right now. And again, my code will run. Or I could tell, you know, cron, hey, when, when this starts up, I want you to do that for me. So that's all that we're doing basically is we're saying, hey, I want you to run this command for me. Um, so I'm going to exit this now. So I'm not sure if you're not familiar with how this kind of works, you would just hit control X and then I'm going to press Y to save. And then I'm going to press enter to kind of enter that, that uh, thing to save the file basically. So if we open up that file again, cron tab edit, we can see that we now have uh, Python 3 and we're starting that file. So, and again, this is all, all available uh, on, this, on this page here. Uh, we talk about how to create the program. We talk about scheduling with cron. So everything is there if you do want to kind of go back and uh, refresh your memory about that. So now I have uh, my schedule started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reboot this system and just make sure that actually works. So I can reboot it by just killing power, or I can just say, I'm just going to say reboot like that. So reboot, and now my uh, server will stop because there's obviously nothing to uh, see. And then we can see here that my, kind of see that here, that my uh, Raspberry Pi is restarting. So what we should see is that this red LED in a few seconds should start blinking on its own, which is telling me, hey, okay, this thing is actually running the program that I told it to. So we should see that soon. There we go, I think it started. So we can see the LED is now blinking and now the Raspberry Pi is rebooted. So basically this means now that every time uh, you unplug power or you, and then you plug it back in, this program will run. So it is quite useful for uh, a kind of a large number of applications. Awesome. So uh, I'm gonna just kill this by going like this. I'm just gonna unplug the fidget to kill that program. So Taking a look here now. Um, if anyone has questions about this, let me know. But again, everything is listed here, so it's pretty. It should be pretty uh, nice to kind of go back and see that. Um, so now the thing I want to talk about a little bit is some other projects. So what we can actually do with the Pi, um, and kind of what we're what we're aiming for it in Fidgets Education to provide to your students and to provide to you guys as well. Um, so the first step here that we see a lot of a lot of schools, just like Michael. Uh, he gave us an example if you were if you were able to listen in the beginning, but he's trying to log data in a greenhouse. So that's a really, really common application. Um, and what you would do for that is uh, you would go back to that projects tab that we saw earlier. Um, so uh, if you want to log data from your Raspberry Pi, it's actually the exact. So again, I'm going to do that. Uh, actually, no, sorry. This is in our advanced projects. So I'm going to hit advanced projects here. And it's going to show me this logging sensor data uh, project right here. So I'm going to click on that. And this will show us how to log data in Python. And we can actually just use that with the Raspberry Pi. So I'll just show that here. Uh, if you scroll down, you have the code here that shows you how to actually log data. 
Um, and this will basically you can make this slightly larger so everybody can see. But basically what you're doing is the main part is you're opening a file uh, just like that. And then you're writing, uh, you're writing the data to it from your sensor. So basically I've already kind of copied this file into my Raspberry Pi. So if I open up Thonny again, and then I open, let's see here. So this is the file that I've just kind of copied in from, from that project. Um, so what this is doing again, it's using the status LED as, um, as the indicator. And in this situation, uh, we're just logging temperature data. So basically if I run this code, we'll see this logging data, logging data, and you can see our uh, LED going off, letting us know that, hey, this thing's actually working. So again, you would use the LED in a situation where you have it kind of running autonomously so that you at least visually can see, okay, this thing's running and it didn't crash. It's, it's a good idea to do something like that. Um, so this thing's logging data, logging data. And then basically if I stop this, I can go find that file, uh, which I, you can specify whatever location you'd like. I have it here because I have a website later that will use this, uh, but you can open this data file and then you can see the data that was logged. So this is in a CSV format. So uh, basically I've actually just logged the same data twice uh, for a reason that you'll find out in a few seconds, but basically this is just a CSV format. So you could open this um, in your, let's see if I believe they have uh, something like office. I don't know, I think the Raspberry Pi, you might have to install a, uh, an Excel type program uh, if you want on the Pi. I think it comes, it doesn't come default. But anyways, you could open this up in Excel and you could actually see the graph and you could, or the, or the data and you could graph it and all that stuff. So uh, pretty simple. And again, all the code is available. So you don't have to kind of refigure this out, but it's pretty straightforward. You're just uh, opening a file and then you're just logging uh, the temperature data. So. Pretty, pretty straightforward there. And again, you know, if you guys do have any questions about that, feel free to always e to email us and we can help you out as well. Um, but that is a main kind of uh, application here of, of, of the Raspberry Pi is the logging uh, piece. Uh, the next kind of piece here is if you do have the Rover. So this is the kind of little uh, Rover that we have for education. Uh, one uh, project that we're coming out with fairly soon will be to replace. So you have the Vint hub here, the wireless hub. Uh, one piece that we're coming out with will be to replace the wireless hub with your Pi. So you can basically use that instead, uh, and then your rover becomes fully autonomous. So there's a few really cool things that uh, come as part of that. One of them is if you do have a camera module. So I have a camera, I'm not sure if you can see this, but I have a little camera module for the Raspberry Pi here. Um, so a few of the projects that we'll be coming out with will be kind of computer aided, computer vision aiding the robot. So, you know, if I see a, pure, a person's face, I'm going to go towards it. Or if I see a red square, you know, things like that, uh, just to expose the students a little bit to the uh, computer vision aspects of it. Um, and I'll just quickly also show you how that will look. So I don't have the rover connected, of course, but I do have, uh, I wrote a little program. It's actually, again, a project. So I copied it actually. So I have this Pi camera file and I'll just show you again where that's located. So again, in the projects tab, so learn, projects, projects here. Uh, and then we again, select that Raspberry Pi. We see this snapshot uh, project here. So this is where all the information is for this next section that I'll be talking about. Um, so you can always reference that. But basically what it looks like is they have this, uh, again, hopefully you can see this. If you have this camera module, that's kind of part of the Pi, you can import it into your Python code, just like you would basically a fidgets object. Uh, and what you can do is what I have here is I've set up a, a little program using my uh, getting started kit. And I am uh, basically, if I push this button, it will take a picture. So if I run this, assuming the other project is okay, let's see. So if I run this and I press this, we can see, I'm not sure if you can see that, but we see a little image uh, being generated there. So if I, I'll do it again. So you can see it just auto incrementing the name. So two, three, four, five. So it's taking pictures, uh, basically it's saying, okay, I wanna take a picture. So it takes a picture from this thing. And then if we open this, it's just, it'll just be the back of my, you know, of the, uh, of the space I'm in. Uh, but kind of a cool application there of combining their pot, the, the camera with fidgets. So you can imagine, uh, you know, if you're doing a security project and you have a distance sensor. So when someone walks by, you can take a picture or if, uh, you know, in Michael's situation again with the greenhouse, uh, maybe you take a time-lapse of your greenhouse kind of 
growing or you know things like that. So there's a lot of really cool applications there, uh, and it's really really nice if you do have the uh, the camera module. So the camera module, I believe, should be somewhere here. I think they have an extras tab. Yeah. So this is the one I have right here. This camera module V2, and it basically plugs right into your Pi, uh, and uh, and it's pretty nice. So that's that's another option there. And we again we will be having the if you do have a rover in your classroom. Uh, we will be having the uh, those projects available probably in the next month or so, uh, just showing how to uh, get that set up. Uh, and then the last one that I wanted to talk about today uh, is hosting a website. So this is again something that we don't it, we're going to have a project for this uh, probably in the next again months or month or so. Uh, but one of the really cool things you can do with this is you can host a website on your Pi. So what you would do is. If we go to the Raspberry Pi website, if you just search actually in Google, if you search uh, Raspberry Pi plus uh, web server, I think. So Raspberry Pi plus web server, it's the first kind of link that you see here. They have a full uh, kind of tutorial. It's really not much of a tutorial actually, it's two steps. You update your packages and then you install uh, Apache 2. That will create a web server on your, um, on your Raspberry Pi. So what you what that basically does, just to give everyone an overview here, if I go, that will generate this uh, this thing here. So if you go to bar, and this is probably in their instructions, but if you just go to your kind of root folder here, <clears throat> and you go to var, this will generate this www.html. So it'll put all of the web server stuff in there. And what I've done here is I've just kind of replaced it with my own uh, content so that I can host a website for fidgets. Um, so what I have here is I have this index.html, which is my main kind of file. So if you edit this with, I mean, you, you'd probably want to edit it with something a little nicer than text edit. But anyways, you can see all my kind of HTML here. And what, I, what, what happens is when you uh, install that Apache web server, it will host, it'll serve out a website from your uh, Pi. So you can find out your IP address but I'm just going to find out what my IP address is with that command here. There's probably a better way potentially to do that. I'm not, I don't use Linux a ton, but um, here's my address right there. So what I'm going to do is, so it's uh, 168.3.175. So what I'm going to do is I'm on the same network. So this Pi is connected to the same network as my computer. So I'm just going to go to that address. So 1375. And then here I have a website that I've created that is now getting data from my fidgets and displaying it. So this again, we'll have a project about this in the near future. Um, and we'll probably also have a webinar about this uh, because it does get a little bit complex. But basically uh, what we're doing is if we remember that, uh, if we remember that logging uh, file, so we had this logging uh, uh, example that we saw earlier. So what I did was I, I changed the location of where I'm logging this to that HTML folder. And then all I'm doing in my website is I'm just grabbing that data and displaying it. So there's a lot of different ways you could do this to make the website nicer, or, you know, there's, there's a lot, a ton of different ways to do this. This is a very simple way. Uh, and then if I run this again, so let's just make this, uh, let's say, let's do that. I'm just going to delete this data file here. So I'm deleting the file. So if we refresh this page, there should be nothing now. So nothing here now. Uh, and then I'm going to run this file again. So I'm getting data uh, five times a second here. And then we can see that now we have a new data file here. And if we look down here even, we can see it increasing in size because we're continually writing to it. Um, so what I'm doing now is if I go back up here, I can refresh and we can get that data coming from the uh, from the sensor there. So again, this is something that we'll probably have a webinar on uh, and definitely a few projects on, uh, but just if you are interested in kind of going off on your own and trying something like this, that's how I would do that. Uh, and and you, of, of course, always feel free to email me uh, and I can, I can get you code and things like that. Um, but those are some of the kind of really interesting aspects, I think of, uh, of, of, of kind of combining the fidgets with the Raspberry Pi, you will, you open up a lot of really interesting avenues, um, and uh, it'll be exciting to see all these new projects that we have coming out. So uh, hopefully everybody hopefully everybody's excited about that and uh, is looking forward to that as well. <laughs>
So as usual, uh, this is the uh, contact information if you would like to get in touch with us. Uh, we do appreciate you guys stopping by uh, and, uh, and we hope that that was a, a useful webinar for, for everybody.